thought I'd show you these grave valve things that uh, are on this engine, this 583 Rotax here. This is something new that I've never seen before, but apparently what they do is raise the exhaust port. Most people know if you take a two cycle and start raising the exhaust port, you get a, a lot more power out of it. And uh, these things are like a little uh, uh, plate of steel that goes in and and cuts off the top of the exhaust port as you can see here. Uh, they look like this and they fit in that slot which you have to keep clean and I imagine from time to time you'd have to clean it out but but that's effectively lower in the exhaust port back to pretty much what the 582 has and then as, as the RPM gets up to about 6500 it's supposed to retract just a little ways up into the up into the uh, cylinder block and it gives you full exhaust and uh, kind of a raised exhaust port to give you more high RPM power so the thing can breathe when it's turning that fast so these things are supposed to go 8,000 RPM instead of 6,500 and I guess you get like about 100 horsepower if you get it up that high but uh, <clears throat> I'm sure it would be a real screaming engine the only thing I can see is that you could get in trouble is the I guess you can see that cut on there. Some of them are marked on one side. What's the top? Well, this one doesn't seem to have any markings on it, but it's a pretty old engine. Uh, but it's, it's a piece of steel, and you can see the cutaway it has like on there. And when it pulls back, uh, it's uh, cut back so it matches the exhaust port. And it kind of pulls back at an angle. There's a uh, washer right here which stops it it can only go forward so far so it as long as you got that washer on there it can't hit the piston you're not you're not going to have a problem with that it pulls back and it works against a spring and there's a little rubber diaphragm that I'll show you that's what actuates this thing but it doesn't move too far it looks to me like it probably moves oh, a quarter inch or so back in there in fact if I put my finger in there you can see how far it retracts and yeah probably a quarter inch of movement is probably all it gets but <clears throat> the way it works is there's a hole right here that's drilled down in there to sense the pressure of the exhaust and it's getting the pressure from your exhaust which would be based on just how hard this thing's pulling and how much fuel it's burning when the pressure gets enough that hole uh, communicates with a, a diaphragm that retracts this thing a little bit against a spring and that's what raises the exhaust port. Kind of a clever idea if it works. I mean I, I would imagine it works pretty well but I don't know who thought of it but it's a way of still giving you some low end torque so you can get your prop spinning or whatever get, get a little bit of low end grunt out of it and yet when it gets up to higher revs I mean, most people that ever rode a motorcycle know when you get the revs up to a certain point with a tuned exhaust, it really starts to pull. About the time you think it's going to blow up, that's when it really starts pulling. Well, <clears throat> some of these diaphragms go on here. You'll see a little communication hole right there. That goes through to the back side of this uh, casting here. To where there's a the communication holes right here and it has to go over there you got to make sure they're not full of carbon or anything and of course it hooks up communicates with this hole here which goes into the exhaust port up in here which I can't show you is too dark but that's where the hole is that's where pressure from the exhaust goes up through this hole and it's gonna push on the diaphragm and the diaphragm is going to push on this spring so the springs are pretty important in order to get the the power band the way you want it uh, and that apparently is adjusted by these red caps that are adjustable you can put a little more tension on the spring and of course the more tensions on the spring the more pressure it would take before the 
the valve starts to to open, starts to raise the exhaust port. So that would be pretty important to adjust your uh, your torque curve to make it something useful that you could use, because you wouldn't want it to open too early, and if you, it opens too late, it's not going to be any better than an engine that doesn't have that feature. Now, putting uh, this casting on, it's just two screws hold it, pretty easy to do. There's a little rubber o-ring, serves as a bumper and kind of a seal probably that keeps maybe some exhaust gases from coming around the shaft. The shaft should go in and out, looks like it goes in and out about a quarter inch or so, looks looks fine and smooth there. I've seen them where the, this thing's got the shaft bent, but uh, the shafts can be straightened out. And uh, the only thing I see that's tricky is you got to make sure you put this casting on there the right way around. There's a, a hole right here in the bottom and that would be a, a drain on both of them. Uh, it's a drain. There's a drain right in there, a little hole. So if any liquid or anything did get in here, it's got a way to get out. Uh, whether it would be oil or water or anything. And uh, now it's just a matter of putting these diaphragm is back on there with the screws. I don't want to get any carburetor cleaner on it because that would be very bad for the rubber but I'll wash it off in some kerosene because uh, there is some oil, black oil kind of inside here which probably is what leaked. Anything that leaks around this shaft would get in here so it doesn't surprise me there could be some burned oil in there. And uh, everything works smooth and I'll put her back together. All right, I got the cover on there. This is just kind of a weather cover made out of plastic to cover up the diaphragm. And I put my new spring in there. I got two springs. Now I'm ready to put these caps on, which are where you would adjust where you want your power band to come on at. Okay, got the adjusters on there now. I think I got those valves together just the way I want them. It's a little finicky to get the head gaskets to stay in the grooves, but uh, I think I'm ready now to uh, offer up the head and bolt her down. Uh, this big thick rubber thing is for the water jacket. It's a little different than a 582, but that's how they did it back then, I guess. A point I should make here that might fool a lot of people all these head bolts are the same length except for these two one here and one here and that's because they're over top of those rave valves and they can't put quite as long a bolt in there so those are a little shorter these two right here so you gotta watch out for that you don't want to put a long bolt in a short hole you're gonna break something 